What's up everybody, this is Jason from jasonscustoms.com and today I bring you the Kwamba drone on breaking down the stick. Kwamba sent me three of their brand new fight sticks, the drone, the carbon, and the crystal, to take apart, investigate, and tell you guys whether they're moddable, repairable, or good quality sticks for whatever level of fighter you may be. So, without further ado, let's break into this thing and see what makes it tick. The drone's a budget stick at only $79.95, so don't expect a premium package with high-quality Japanese parts inside. The case weighs a mere 3 pounds, which may sound appealing to the traveling fighter, but its overall plastic construction doesn't fill me with a lot of confidence in its durability. Having taken the stick completely apart, the only bits of metal in the entire build are the fasteners, quick disconnects, and the Quamba branded lever mounting plate. For my taste, the stick leaves a bit on the table as it feels like a toy and didn't stay put in my lap while playing. Drone makes the most basic mod, changing the ball top, a bit easier with a bottom access port. I found it was a bit difficult to remove and couldn't do it with my weaker hand. I also needed to use a small flathead screwdriver to pop the cover off. Once removed, you have access to the flathead screwdriver slot on the bottom of the shaft that allows you to keep the shaft from turning while removing the ball top with your free hand. Getting inside to do more part swaps is pretty straightforward. Just remove the six Phillips head screws from the bottom and the top will come off, granting access to the buttons, lever, and main PCB. The shaft cover, ball top, and dust washer are all basic parts easily swappable with Sanwa or Shimitsu parts. As you see, there isn't much required in the way of tools or time to remove all of the main hardware. A total of 10 Phillips screws holds all of the main guts of the stick together. The base of the case is a lot more plastic with the standard strengthening ribs and posts common to plastic molded parts. It reveals the simple cable management in place for the USB cable and that's about it. There is some room to add some smaller parts like a Kamana LED controller, but that's about it. Most of the plastic you'd want to trim away to add parts are strength elements and would weaken the case. The lever is a Kwamba original part and doesn't leave a lot of room for modifications. The restrictor plate is a single piece of plastic, so if you want to use a circle or octogate, you're out of luck. Getting it off, though, is very easy. You just need to remove the four screws. If you look close, Kwamba opted to use .187-inch quick disconnect style switches in their lever instead of developing a PCB-type solution you would normally see on a Sanwa JLF. While not uncommon, as some Samitsu and Crown levers use this method, it makes lever swaps a bit more complex because you need to choose a lever that will either accept a .187-inch quick disconnect or do some complex harness mods to make it work. Fortunately, Kwamba left you plenty of wire to work with, either way you choose to go. Diving deeper into the guts of the lever more reveals Omeron D3V switches with actuation levers. Omeron has been used in many levers of the past, common are the D2RVGs used on the Silent JLF series. The stock switches could easily be swapped out for cherry switches or even other Omeron switches if you wanted, but at $2 to $5 per switch, it might not be worth it for this budget lever. Overall, the lever will feel loose and cheap to experienced fighters that grew up on Sanwalch LF or Samitsu LS56 offerings. You might think adding a heavier spring will help, but again, adding $2 to a budget lever that you will likely change out other parts on as well doesn't make a lot of sense. Adding a JLF will save you money, time, and improve the overall performance of the drone tremendously. But wait, what about the Hori Hayabusas? They fit, right? No, unfortunately not. They're just too big and they don't fit into the case. The housing interferes with the mounting poles where the lever mounts on the bottom. Kwamba integrated the auxiliary panel with the main PCB that interfaces with the PlayStation 3 and 4 and mounted it to the top of the case where most of the connections are located. It saves room and I assume makes assembly at the manufacturer super easy, but it makes other mods a lot more complex. Functions such as home, options, turbo, etc., they're all integrated into the PCB and activated by those rubber dome style switches. Looking closer at the PCV though, you do see a lot of modder friendly information. The connectors are all well labeled with which pin does what and takes all of the guesswork out of figuring out which wire does what with your multimeter. Kwamba used JST style connectors for the button harnesses, lever harness, and USB connector, and everything can be removed rather easily. Unlike other manufacturers, they realize that these connectors are actually designed to hold themselves in place, and they didn't use a bunch of glue that is usually more of a nuisance than a help when they assembled it. 
Adding functionality to the stick with a PCB swap or a pad hack will require a lot of fine soldering and awkward spots on the single board. I don't recommend trying advanced modding on this unless you want a challenge and are okay flushing $80 down the toilet. Similar to the lever, the buttons used in the drone are Quamba Originals using standard .110 inch quick disconnects in clear PVC boots. Removing and reconnecting them requires a modest amount of force, but no tools were required. The buttons look like Sanwa OBSFs, but require less force to actuate, but not by much. They feel comparable to build quality of an OBSF, but the switch inside is what really matters and they are just relatively okay. Keep in mind the cost of the stick and that's about what you should expect out of these buttons. One thing I did like though was the attention to detail with the buttons and the fact that Kwamba's name is molded into the housing. While it doesn't perform any better with this, it does show Kwamba's eye for the small stuff. Kwamba's entrance into this generation of consoles has been interesting. They started out with the drone, which is a low-quality, budget-minded stick. It doesn't have the high-quality parts of the other sticks, like Hori's or Mad Cat's, but what it lacks in those premium parts, it definitely makes up for in price. At only an $80 price tag, it's very attractive to those who are maybe new to the community or just play occasionally and don't really need or care about having those high-end parts that many of us have grown accustomed to over the years. They are very unapologetic with the stick and they understand that it's budget friendly and it's budget minded. At only three pounds, like I mentioned earlier, you're not going to feel like you have a solid piece of gear. You feel like you have a toy while you're playing with it. And that's okay. If you want something better than this, you're going to pay the money and buy something better. Where this stick does shine is compared to the Hori Mini Stick or even the Mad Cat's Alpha, you can actually mod this one relatively easy and upgrade the buttons as well as the lever without much hassle. So if you need a low cost stick, or maybe you just want something light you can travel to casuals with or even the occasional tournament, this may be okay for you. If you're a little bit rougher on your play, or you definitely want something that can be modded with uh, quad mods or pad hacks or LEDs, etc., you may want to look elsewhere because this is not the form factor for you. Overall, for basic mods, I'm going to give this thing an A. And I say that because you can swap the buttons and the lever relatively quickly and easily with standard off-the-shelf parts. If you want to do anything more advanced, such as adding LEDs or pad hacks, I'm going to have to give this thing maybe a D or an F. And I say that only because the main board, the aux board, and everything's integrated into one. Because the, fault, the form factor is so small, it's going to be difficult to route some of the wires and get those things installed cleanly and neatly. It may just be better to use an external converter from someone like Brooke, maybe, if you want to use this with other systems besides the PS3 or PS4. If you are looking at buying a stick and you definitely want to have those premium parts, you may want to shy away from this. And I only say that because if you take a look over at Arcade Shock's website and you put the buttons and the lever and all the parts you need to upgrade this into a cart, as you can see, it adds up quick and all of a sudden your $80 stick becomes about $120. And if you throw another $20 into that mix and factor in your time, you can buy something a little bit nicer, a little bit more concrete, and a little bit better overall. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't buy this, and it's pretty interesting, and it might look cool on your shelf, but if you have other fight sticks, this may not become your number one priority, and that's okay. So, if you liked this video, give it the thumbs up. If you didn't like this video and you think I'm a boob, give it a thumbs down. If you have suggestions for future versions of breaking down the stick or things that you'd like me to cover, please leave in the comments below. And as always, please check out my website, jasonscustoms.com, and see what we got going on today. Until next time, signing off, thanks for watching.